Welcome back to Rock the JVM, folks. This is Daniel, and what you're watching is Scala with Slick, one of the most popular libraries for database interactions in Scala applications. This is probably going to be the start of a mini series with Slick, and I'm going to describe the main features of Slick and how to use them in a project that I'm going to start from scratch. Now, as before, the objective is that you write code with me in these videos because there's no better way to learn than getting your hands dirty. And if you're comfortable with Scala, you should be able to follow them without any problems. There's also a written version at the blog with the link in the description, which I recommend you keep handy because there's a bunch of configurations that we're going to simply copy from the blog post because I don't want to type them from scratch. So without further ado, let's discuss what Slick is and how to use it. So Slick is a functional relational mapping library for Scala. That is a library that will turn your Scala code into queries that can actually be run on a relational database. And we're gonna use Postgres for our examples over here. I've just started an IntelliJ project. This is plain SBT with no library definitions. We're going to add them shortly. And this application consists of a simple main hello world, which of course I'm going to delete shortly as well. Now, in order to get started with Slick, of course, we need to add the library definitions here under build.sbt because for now we don't have anything. So I recommend that you navigate to the blog post with the link in the description of this video and navigate to the setup chapter in the article and just pull out these library dependencies. So just copy them and add them to your build SBT and hit this little refresh button to make IntelliJ or your favorite development environment fetch these libraries for us. This will take a little while for IntelliJ to download them. And at this point, we should be good. All right. Now, in order to actually interact with a Postgres database, we are going to use Postgres in this video as a demonstration. But of course, you can use any kind of relational database to interact with Slick. Postgres is the easiest one. We are going to spin up a Postgres Docker container here locally so that we have all the services ready. So navigate to the blog post yet again and copy the file contents which are the Docker Compose YML file. So copy the next uh, code snippet, and we're going to create a Docker Compose YML here under the main project folder. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to name this docker-compose YML. And the name is important because with Docker Compose, we are going to spin up a service that is encapsulated in a Docker container. So I'm going to paste the entire contents here in this Docker Compose YML file. Now at the time of recording, we're using Postgres 14.1, but you can also cut the version and simply keep the image to Postgres and Docker will simply download the latest image. So of course, if you don't have Docker on your computer, I recommend you pause the video and install it for your own platform, Windows, Linux, or Mac, whatever you have. And we're going to spin up the Docker Postgres container shortly. Now notice that in this configuration, we have a section for volumes. These are some local files that are mounted inside the Docker container. And one that's very important to us is dot slash db slash init scripts.sql. This is a local file that we currently don't have yet. We're going to create that and we're going to run some SQL scripts that the Docker container will execute automatically when the Docker container is spinning up. So here under slick demo live, I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call this DB because that's why that's how I've called it in the volume section here. And under DB, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this init dash scripts dot sql. The name is important because it must be the same as in the configuration. So this init scripts dot sql will contain some sql statements that the docker container will execute automatically upon spinning up. Now with all of these things set up already, I recommend that you open a terminal window on your computer and navigate to the directory where you started the IntelliJ project. I already have two terminal windows because we're going to uh, need two of them. So if you can 
open two terminal windows, navigate to the directory where you spun up the uh, project for Slick, and run this command docker-compose up to create the Docker container which contains the Postgres database. At the first launch, Docker Compose Up will try to download the Postgres image that's necessary to spin up the Docker container. Don't worry if this takes more than a minute or so. I already have the image on my computer, which is why the database spins up almost instantly. All right, now, at this point, the database should be up and running. If it doesn't, or if the command is taking a little while, don't worry, we can come back to it. And while you're following up to this video, the database should already be up and running. Getting back to the blog post, the next thing that we're gonna add is some configurations to be able to connect to the Postgres database. So we already have the server localhost 5432, which is the default port of Postgres. The database name is called Postgres, the user is called Postgres, and the password is admin. And all of these things are the exact same setup configurations that we already have in the Docker Compose YML. So notice that we have the user Postgres and the password admin so that we can connect to it seamlessly. So navigate to the blog post again and copy the configuration here which contains Hikari CP, which is Hikari Connection Pool, one of the most popular ways to connect to a database. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that under source main and here uh, right above Scala I'm going to create a new directory I'm going to call this resources and the name resources is important and under resources I'm going to create a new file whose name is also important it's called application.conf and application.conf will contain this exact content which is the configuration for the Scala application to be able to connect to Postgres. And at this moment, if we only refer to the Postgres configuration in application.conf, the Slick library will know how to connect to Postgres. In the blog post, there's also an alternative for you to interact with the Postgres database in an alternative fashion. We're going to skip that, and we're going to start running our first code. So here under main, under the main application, I'm going to import slick.gdbc Postgres profile dot API everything. And this is a package that contains a bunch of functionalities for us to spin up a database connection. And I'm going to create a val, I'm gonna call this db as database dot for config. And we're going to refer to the Postgres section. Database for config is a function that will automatically look for application.conf under source main resources. So the path and names are important. And the Postgres section is the exact block that we've defined here in application.com. So Postgres contains this entire kind of like JSON unit here, which contains all these fields. And all these fields will be posted to Slick and Slick will automatically create to uh, the database through this little DB object. So we're going to use this DB object to run all of our queries. Now I'm going to try to keep this project clean as we develop it in this video mini series, which is why I'm going to create a new uh, Scala object. I'm going to call this connection. And this object connection will contain the database that I'm going to refer to in all of my application. So this database here needs to be imported. So I'm going to cut the import and bring it here onto connection. So here connection.db will be our go-to point to run slick queries. Now, speaking of queries, let's define our first data structure and our first table that we can actually run to Slick. So here under Comrock, the JVM, I'm going to create a new Scala class. I'm going to call this model, and I'm going to make it an object. And this object called model, I'm going to create a bunch of case classes, either here inside the object, or you can define them outside, depending on how you like to organize your code. I'm going to create a case class. I'm going to call this movie. We have used the movies example in uh, another series here on Rock the JVM on Doobie, where we had the movies database and the Doobie is another library that's uh, used in the type level ecosystem to interact with databases. And uh, I'm going to create a case class called movie with an ID as long. I'm going to have a name as a string, a release date 
as a local date from Java. So I'm going to use local date from Java time. And let's call this length in minutes. I'm going to uh, consider that an integer. Now here under this model thing, you can pass the case class, or I'm actually going to remove that and I'm going to add a bunch of other uh, objects that will contain some table definitions for Slick to map the actual database tables to our case classes. So I'm going to create a class, I'm going to call this Slick or an object, an object, I'm going to call this Slick tables. And I'm going to import Postgres profile dot API dot everything. This is the same entry point that we used in the connection type where we could create a database from config here, we're going to do a different kind of thing, I'm going to create a class, I'm going to call this movie table. And I'm going to create a class that slick knows how to map the actual database table to the movie case class. So uh, here's how I'm going to write this. First of all, I'm going to pass a tag which is a type alias inside the Postgres API. And this extends the table type from slick that I'm going to type generically with movie. And the table movie is going to have some constructor arguments, I'm going to pass this little tag because all the uh, table definitions will have to pass a tag. And I'm going to name this movies. This is the so called schema name from slick. So this is the uh, schema name. And the actual table name that uh, Postgres will actually contain is going to be called movie with a capital M. And in this class, I need to implement a bunch of methods. And I'm going to ask IntelliJ to suggest those for me. And I'm going to implement this little method called star. And uh, the slick API is uh, quite compact, and there's quite a lot to unwrap here. But the star method tells slick how to map a movie case class with a movie record from the database. And to that end, I'm going to define a method called ID. So I'm going to define methods for every single field in the case class. This is uh, something that I recommend you do whenever you want to map a case class to your own tables, just create some methods that correspond to all the fields in your case class. And the ID column in this case is going to be a column. And column is a method from this API package, which is very, very big. And I'm going to type this with long so that slick can find the appropriate implicit to inject here, there is a bunch of very obscure types that slick operates with such that uh, it maps the appropriate types for us. And the column long takes or could take a bunch of arguments. Notice that we have n string, which is the uh, identifier in the table. So I'm going to have my let's call this movie underscore ID. And then I'm going to have a bunch of column options. The column options are some properties of that column in the actual database table. For example, the ID here for movies is supposed to be the primary key of the movie record. So I'm going to have a column property that's called O dot primary key. Now, these things are still quite obscure, O belongs to this API package. And this is a column options object. And the column options object is something that contains primary key default auto increment unique and length. These are the uh, properties that slick supports off the bat. So we have primary key here, and then O dot automatic increment auto ink. And this will tell slick to automatically increment the primary key or the ID that the database has stored up to this point whenever we want to insert a movie into the database. So this is what this line does, there's quite a bit to unpack here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to define columns for the other fields as well. So I'm going to have a name, which is a column of type string, string, and this needs to have a name. So I'm going to use name here, then the called release date, which is a column of type local date. 
and Slick already has some implicits even for some types such as the Java time local date, which is great. And I'm going to have a release date. Then I'm going to have my length in minutes as column of type int, because that's the type with which I've used this in the case class. And I'm gonna have length underscore in underscore minutes, for instance. Now, once I've defined methods for all the fields in my case class, of course, this is not mandatory, but this is how I recommend that you organize your code. The star method, which is very, very important, I'm going to create a tuple of column objects. So the star method is supposed to map column objects created by Slick to the movie constructor and destructor. So I'm going to use ID, name, release date, and length in minutes, which are column objects created by Slick. So these are column descriptions. So I've created a tuple four of column descriptions. And then I'm going to use a very interesting operator, which is uh, less than greater than this is an extension method provided by Slick. And then I'm going to have two things passed in this tuple. First of all, a constructor of the case class movie based on a tuple of four values. And thankfully, because we have the movie as a case class, we already have built in a function that's called movie.tupled. This is automatically created by the compiler. And this is a function of type tuple four of the exact types to a movie case class instance, which is the exact type signature that we want here. So we're going to use movie.tupled here. So this is a construction function that will build a movie out of a tuple of these four values. And then we will need a destructure that will take a movie and it will release a tuple of these four values, which is called movie.unapply. Movie.unapply is the function that's called in pattern matching, but here unapply can be also used explicitly. So the star method is the mapping of these four columns. So after I've done the four column objects in a tuple, I need to pass a tuple of two functions, one to build a movie out of a tuple and one to build a tuple out of a movie. So a back and forth constructor and destructor functions here. So this is the mapping function to the case class. All right, so after I've made the movie table class, now I need to create some sort of a, a API entry point to the movie table, which is I'm going to define that as a lazy val. And I'm going to call this movie table as table query of type movie table. Now this table query takes a generic type argument and through an internal macro creates a um, let's call this of an object with a bunch of logic inside of it. And that logic allows us to fetch movies from the database and to insert movies into the database. So this is the minimal kind of code that you will have to write in order to read and write movies into the database. And now it's time to demonstrate the regular create up a read update and delete functions of the database through the code that we've just written. So here under the main application, I'm going to demonstrate that. So let me create a movie uh, example. I'm going to call this Shawshank Redemption as a movie. And the movie has an ID, let's say of one, and I'm going to have Shawshank Redemption. I think it's called the Shawshank Redemption. So let me add the proper name here. So the Shawshank Redemption, then we have the release date, which is a local date. And I'm going to import local date, I'm going to say local date of and we need to pass the year, month and day. And I have my notes here, it's 1994, September 23. So we have nine and 23. And the length in minutes is 162 minutes. Somebody on the internet may correct me on that one. So I'm going to demonstrate insert for this movie. Of course, you can pass any movie that you like as an argument. I'm going to use the Shawshank Redemption example here. So in order to insert a movie, first of all, I'm going to run my little query description. 
I'm going to define a, a variable. I'm going to call this query description as slick tables dot movie table. And this movie table object has a mutator plus equals and I'm going to use Shawshank Redemption here. Now, in order for us to be able to use this mutator, because the mutator is an extension method on the movie table type, I'm going to import Postgres profile dot API dot everything. You can also do that inside the object main because you want to keep this scoped to the main application. So notice that once I've done that, the mutator is applicable to us. Otherwise, the Scala compiler will think that the mutator is for the movie table as a regular variable, which is not the case. So this mutator will allow us to statefully describe the fact that the movie table object has this new query to insert Shawshank Redemption, the movie data structure inside the Postgres table. So again, there is quite a bit to unpack. Now this query description is a profile action. Now the profile action is a data type that extends fixed action and fixed action extends SQL action, SQL action extends basic action, basic action extends database action, and database action extends the most general type in Slick, which is DBIO action. In order for us to actually perform any kind of effect on the database, we need to pass DBIO actions of this sort to the table that we want to run the DBIO action on. And the DBIO action has some generic data types which are automatically inferred by the Scala compiler. And these type arguments resemble the effect types that are newer in the Scala ecosystem, such as Zio. The final type in particular describes the effect type, which is pretty forward looking for slick. Anyway, let's come back to the main application. That's what we were doing here. And this query description is this profile action that we need to actually perform. So I'm going to use connection.db.run. And then we have to pass this DBIO action. Notice that we have the uh, parameter here. So I'm going to pass this query description. And this returns a future of a result. So this is a future, let's call this future ID, which is of type future int. And the future needs to be imported, of course. And you can also debug that. So I'm going to use, let's say, future ID dot, let's say, on complete. And I'm going to uh, add a bunch of cases. So I'm going to import Scala util. And then I'm going to use try, success, and failure. These are the types that are applicable to on complete. So in case I succeed with a new ID, so new movie ID, I'm going to print to the console, the query was successful, new ID is ID, or new movie ID, that's how I called it. And in case I get a failure, with some sort of exception, I'm going to print line, query failed, reason is this exception. Right now on complete requires a thread pool on which to run. So I'm going to create an implicit execution context. So I'm going to create a um, executor as executors new fixed thread pool, let's say four threads and implicit val, let's call this execution context, execution context. And this is execution context dot from executor service and I'm going to pass this executor inside. Cool. You may want to abstract this away. I'm going to cut these out. Um, right, let's cut both of these lines out. And I'm going to add an object, let's call this um, private execution context, or my execution context, depending on how you like to name your stuff, I'm going to pass these things here. And then I'm going to import private execution context, everything. Right, so now we can run this oncomplete callback on the execution context. So at this point, we can actually run this application. However, we need to make sure that there is such a table in the actual Postgres database. So if we navigate to the Docker container, notice that the database should be up and running, we need to run some Postgres SQL queries. Now, I'm going to kill the Docker containers. So you can hit Control C 
To stop the Postgres container so that we can start it again, this time making sure that the tables are created because right now the database is empty. So I'd recommend that you navigate to the blog post again and scroll until you can see some SQL statements here. So create extension, whatever, you can copy all this code. So copy that. And I'm going to go back to the IntelliJ project and navigate to the init script SQL file that we created at the beginning. So under the DB folder, init script SQL and paste everything here. This contains the table definitions that we are going to use for this demonstration. So notice that we have movies dot movie actor, movie actor mapping and so on and so forth. We have a bunch of data structures. So for our demonstration, only the first line with movies dot movie is important for us, but for later use cases, we're also going to use the rest of the table. So I recommend you keep all of them here. So after you've added this code in, in its scripts.sql, you can go back to the terminal window and do Docker compose up again. And uh, if it uh, shows some kind of error, I'm going to use Docker compose down to destroy the Docker container. And then I'm gonna do Docker compose up again to spin it up. All right, and at this point, you should see in the logs some lines that look something like this, create extension, create schema, create table, and so on and so forth. So if you see this, then the Docker container now contains the appropriate tables for us. And in another terminal window, I'm gonna run the following command. I'm gonna say Docker, uh, Docker PS, first of all, so that you can fetch the name of the Docker container. So right now, the name of my Docker container is called slick demo live DB underscore one, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to use Docker exec dash it, I'm going to paste this name, and then I'm going to say psql dash capital U Postgres, this is the admin username for us. So I'm going to ex execute that. And then I'm going to try to select star from movie dot and I'm going to use quotes here because otherwise the select statements are case insensitive. I'm going to have movie, uh, movie movies. That's how I remember this. So movies dot movie, actually, so I'm going to have movies dot movie singular, and then with a semicolon. And if you have something like this, an empty table, then that means the table is ready to have data inserted into that. So at this moment, we have the Postgres Docker container up and running and waiting for us to insert a bunch of values in it. And at this point, we can run our slick application. So we have a Shawshank Redemption movie that we want to insert into this database. So in main, I'm going to instead of print line, of course, I'm going to call demo insert movie, and hopefully this should work nicely. So let's run this application and see what happens. So first of all, it compiled and our future completed very, very quickly. So we do we didn't actually see any print line statements. Let's come back to the Docker container. Let's try to select and the movies actually uh, were not inserted, which is probably because the futures, uh, the future ID here was not actually run because the execution context finished very late. I'm actually gonna do a thread sleep with let's say 10 seconds to give some time for the future to actually perform the query and finish so that the execution context doesn't actually stop that soon. All right, so notice that at this time we have query successful new ID is one and after 10 seconds, the application is going to stop. Let's come back to the movies database and let's run the select again. And notice that at this time we have something in the table, we have Shawshank Redemption in our movies table. So that's the create part of the regular CRUD um, suite of operations. Let me define another value here. I'm going to call this the matrix and I'm going to have a, another movie with index number two, the matrix, and I'm going to have a local date of, and from my notes here, we have 1999, March 31st, and then 134 minutes as reported by Wikipedia. And I'm going to run, I'm going to actually insert the matrix in the uh, movies table. Let's rerun this application and let's see what happens. All right, so we have this movie inserted in the database as well. Let's try to run another select. Now we have the matrix as well. So now we have Shawshank Redemption 
and the matrix. Let's demonstrate a read this time. So let me kill the application and let's try a read. So I'm going to have demo read all read all movies. And in this case, I'm going to run, let's call this result future as connection DB run and instead of saying slick tables movie table plus equals something, I'm going to say slick tables dot movie table. So notice that this is the entry point of all our operations. And then I'm going to say dot result. Result is a method that is going to return one of those DBIO actions. And this is essentially the same as select star from whatever table we are interested in. And this result future is correctly typed because the movie table is an object that is correctly typed. So this is going to be a future of a sequence. So a seek of movie. And of course, you can investigate the value of this future. And then you can do whatever you want with the results noting that they are correctly typed. So we have type safety here in slick. Now I'm going to run result uh, future dot on complete. And I'm going to have let's say success with some movies, then I'm going to print line fetched. And then I'm going to inject um, movies. And this is pretty much it movies dot make string with a comma something like that. And uh, in case I get a failure of exception, then I'm going to print line failure. Print line, I'm going to say uh, fetching failed, and I'm going to inject the exception inside. And again, I'm going to run a thread sleep. So a thread sleep for let's say 10 seconds. And in demo read all movies, there's nothing else that we need to do in the database because we already have the values. So I'm going to run this application and we should see two values being fetched. So notice that we have fetched movie with Shawshank Redemption and movie with to the matrix. So this is an easy way now that we have set up all our machinery. It's now quite easy to fetch the appropriate records from our tables and we already have them correctly typed. You can also run some kind of filter on the uh, movie table records. If you want to pass some sort of filter, I'm going to actually copy this method to demonstrate that real quick. So I'm going to say demo read, let's say some movies. Let's say that you're uh, interested in learning about the matrix series assuming that we have a bunch of matrix films in our table. So I'm going to have result future, which is the same thing. And I'm going to run connection DB dot run slick tables movie table. And before I run result, I can actually modify the movie table with a functional programming function like filter. So filter and I'm going to say underscore dot name. And then I'm going to say like matrix. So notice that the function uh, that you have available to you in filters are very much resembling the kind of SQL functions that you normally would have to write if you were to type the queries in the database itself. So name like matrix, and then making sure that we have the proper parentheses here because the result has to come last. So slick tables movie table filter underscore name like matrix. And then after that, we're going to call result. So we have select star from whatever table where name like matrix. Pretty much. So let's call this method and let's see what we get. And we have uh, nothing fetched. So this is okay, because matrix here is just the word, but we need to pass a regular expression, and not just any regular expression, but the expressions that SQL can understand, which is why I'm going to put a percent here and a percent here, a percent means zero or more characters before and zero or more characters after. And this is the regular expression that the SQL query is going to receive. So notice that at this time, we have the matrix fetched from the database. All right, so this is the read aspect. Now updates are pretty similar. So I'm going to have a demo update. Let's say that I'm interested in uh, modifying Shawshank Redemption. And let's say I want to modify length in minutes here. And uh, I'm going to have a demo update. 
And first of all, I need to fetch the right value. So I'm gonna have my query descriptor as slick tables, movie table, and then again, I'm going to use the filter function that we did before. So filter, and I'm going to say underscore dot ID must be equal to one or one long. And then I'm gonna say update and then I'm gonna pass a movie. So I'm gonna have my movie table hash table element type, which is exactly the movie data type that I'm interested in. And I'm gonna say Shawshank Redemption. So I'm gonna say Shawshank Redemption dot copy where the, uh, where's that? Uh, length in minute must be equal to, let's say it's not 162, it's 150 or something. Length and minute is 150. This is a new data structure and update will take this data structure and force the update in the table. Of course, I'm going to run the exact same update query. So I'm gonna have a uh, future ID with on complete and thread sleeps and all that good stuff. I'm going to paste them here and not query description, query descriptor because that's how I named the variable. And one final thing that we need to do is notice that IntelliJ is uh, smart enough to add a small um, warning here because underscore dot ID is not actually a, a number, but it's a representation of a number, which is an internal data structure from Slick. And you can compare that thing to one L. You'll have to use a different kind of operator. Here we'll use a triple equals. This is the right method to use. Right, so I'm going to call demo update here in main. And let's run this. Hopefully we'll get something. All right, so we have query successful. Let's look at the database. So select star for movies. Now we have length in minutes in the Shawshank Redemption. We have 150. So we have updates now as well. Finally, let's talk delete. So demo delete. And deletes are pretty simple. Instead of calling result here, in the uh, table that you obtain after filtering whatever you need to filter, you can call delete. So I'm gonna say connection DB run, and let's say I want to delete the matrix movies, all of them, and instead of result, I'm gonna call delete. And that is it. So let's call demo delete in main, and everything that contains matrix in the movie names, we are going to run. So let's see. Oh, we have uh, the future described, but they weren't actually run. So I'm gonna have to say a thread sleep, let's say five seconds. Let's try to run this again. All right, let's check the table and notice that the matrix is gone. All right, so by the end of this video, you should have a setup of Slick working in your project with Scala, and you now have a good understanding of the regular create, read, update, and delete classical operations on the database. We're gonna follow up in the next videos with some more advanced functionality of Slick, so stay tuned. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material. And check out the Rock the JVM website. I have hundreds of hours literally on everything in the Scala ecosystem, including Apache Spark, Aka, Cats Effect, Zeo, and so much more. Till next time, Daniel signing off.